Hi everyone, um, today I'll be discussing part three of Segu, um, specifically issues having to do with colonialism, which I thought was uh, one of the main themes running throughout the section. Um, and uh, I also want to take a, a historical look um, at some of the events that Conde describes, um, because uh, she obviously did um, do um, a lot of historical research um, to write the novel, and uh, many of the events correlate to, many of the events in part three correlate to a transition that was occurring in the relationship between um, West African uh, societies um, and empires um, and their relationship to the European uh, colonizers. Um, so uh, of, in chapter two, um, Condé uh, writes, in June 1822, the town of Cape Coast was regarded as was regarded by some as the finest spot along the stretch of the African seaboard known as the Gold Coast. So it's important that Conde sets um, this section um, or this chapter in 1822 because some historical background is that in 1921, um, that year marked the official beginning of uh, the Cape Coast um, as uh, a Europe as an English colony, um, because beforehand uh, the trading posts were owned and controlled by uh, private companies, specifically the African Company of Merchants. Um, but in 1921, um, to in order to um, exert a stronger influence over um, over that part of Africa, which was so important um, in developing. Uh, England's capitalist economy, um, they, they would take it over. Um, and Conde also tells us that until recently the English had used the fort as a distribution point for slaves on their way to the Americas and they had rarely left the place except after ships berthed there to trade along the coast, especially the Fonti. Um, so uh, another historical point is that the English had abolished the slave trade um, the transatlantic slave trade um, in 1907. Um, uh, they, they would not abolish slavery in their colonies until 1833. Um, and still after that, um, they, they would turn to uh, other methods of extracting labor um, directly from the colonies, singling, signaling the shift between a sort of economic imperialism represented by the forts um, and the transition to uh, what we now consider colonialism, um, which is actually the, the, the forcible taking and control of, of uh, territory. So the English um, previously um, had only traded around the coast, but gradually their influence had spread, and they had set themselves up as defenders of the Fonti against their enemies inland, the Ashanti. Um, and so this is a tactic that echoes um, the, the English, specifically the English colonization of North America, in which um, the British would um, ally with uh, different um, uh, tribal nations, uh, indigenous nations, and um, use that to their advantage in, again, extracting land and resources and labor from these indigenous uh, societies. Um, so you can see also the attitude, this sort of um, imperialist, colonialist attitude, um, when Conde describes uh, the, the English are, are really champing at the bit inside the fort, waiting for their government to decide what relationship it meant to entertain with the new Ashanti masters. Why didn't they attack these barbarians? Why didn't they ensure unhampered trade by occupying the whole region? Um, and so uh, Condé is, um, she's sort of looking in, uh, she, can, she can glean the, uh, the attitudes of, of, the, of the English um, with the benefit of hindsight, because we know um, that that is exactly what the English would do 
um, through uh, beginning in 1822 and throughout uh, the 19th century, there would be five Anglo-Ashanti Wars, um, which would end in the incorporation of the British Gold Coast, um, which uh, was uh, then in 1902 became a protectorate of Great Britain. But um, still, this whole century it is really solidifying um, England's uh, colonial relationship with the Gold Coast, um, which will later become Ghana, um, which would not be independent until 1957. So this is a very long um, colonial relationship that these, that these two powers have. I also want to talk a little bit about uh, Christianity, which plays a large role um, in the section. In fact, the whole idea of um, missionary work is in itself um, an imperialist and white supremacist uh, paternalistic view of um, the way in which these two civilizations, the African and the English, um, what their relationship should be. And, and they believe it should be one of, um, uh, of, of um, converting um, what they see as barbarians to um, the true religion. Um, and it's actually to French, um, to French priests who will um, save Malabali's life, but then he is basically uh, an indentured servant to them, um, almost like a slave uh, type status. Um, and this also, uh, this idea of, um, of Africans and of black people owing their existence to the will of whites um, is something that is also present today uh, in the idea of um, uh, being, uh, uh, in the idea of the white savior, which is a trope in literature and um, uh, just in the public consciousness in America at least. Um, and then to go back to uh, the Gold Coast, um, Malabali compares the he compares the town of Cape Coast um, as owing its existence only to the will of the whites. Uh, in those days, Cape Coast had no wall; it was there for the taking, like the women the whites took, made pregnant and abandoned. So we see that Malabali, um, as an African and just as an individual sees uh, this, uh, this injustice that's been placed upon not only the people, but also the land. And I think that these two go hand in hand. I mean, you can't have the physical colonization without also this um, uh, mental or cultural war against the beliefs of the indigenous population. Um, uh, Conde writes, he, meaning um, priest uh, Father Ulrich, uh, he rooted out all the beliefs Malabali had hitherto lived by. He left him not a moment's freedom. The prison he'd built for him was the strongest and subtlest of all jails, for you couldn't see its walls. Um, so this is a kind of ideological prison that Malabali is in um, that will sort of, that foreshadows and also reflects um, the process of colonization that's going on um, in this part of West Africa. Um, another character who we're able to explore Christianity through is the character of Romana slash Ayodele. Um, she has, uh, er, <clears throat> as a former slave in Brazil, um, living in Ouida, she has a degree of privilege because she's a member of the Aguda culture, which is a culture of Brazilian and Portuguese um, who have power because of their association with Christianity and also their proximity to white people um, who are uh, regarded as the, the most powerful um, force, I guess, acting in that region. They're one of the most powerful forces. Um, 
And the last thing I wanted to touch on was um, the wedding between Malo Bali and Romana slash Ayodele. Um, and, and kind of the, the attitude that Barame takes towards um, the, the celebration of their heritage, not as Africans, but as um, Brazilians, because the musicians come in and they're waving the flag of Bahia, the, um, the place where they were formerly enslaved. Um, Conde writes, if all the agudos were interested in was perpetuating the memory of Brazil, why hadn't they stayed there? Here they were, proclaiming those were the happiest days of their lives. Had they forgotten they had been slaves and that they had chosen to come back to Africa? Had they forgotten that they'd often fomented revolts over there? What a strange reversal. And then um, another interesting uh, point is when... Uh, is, is the ball that they have. Um, Conde writes, all the Agudas could remember, all the Agudas could remember the balls given by their former masters in the Sif or Bahia or in the Fazendas on the day of the Harvest Festival or Botada. When all they had done was bring in the dishes, but now it was they who danced to the music of the waltzes and quadriles. Uh, with an abandon perhaps unknown to the Portuguese, nostalgia and a sense of wrongs righted, at last combined to lend a special atmosphere to the celebrations and draw all the guests together. Um, so here we can see kind of two conflicting views of the Aguda culture. Um, on the one hand, Barame, who's a Bambara and um, an, uh, an African, um, views them uh, with suspicion. We know that from comments that he's made and also this insight that Conde gives us. Um, but then also uh, there is a sense of nostalgia among the, the Agudas and the freed slaves for um, their past life as, um, in Brazil. And there is a sense of wrongs righted because they are finally the ones who um, get to enjoy the festivities that once were the privilege um, of uh, only the whites, of their masters. And so, so uh, I think it's um, one question to consider is, uh, what do you make of this, um, what Birame calls a strange reversal um, of these, uh, these freed slaves and of the Agudas living um, in Wida? Um, on the one hand, they are able to reclaim uh, a, a symbol of their... In one way, they're able to right the wrong of their enslavement by participating in this event that would have only been uh, the privilege of their masters. Um, but also, um, to me, it could also signify uh, the... Um, the adoption of a kind of uh, white white supremacist mentality, basically, um, that the only way to reclaim power would be to be in proximity to the whites and act like them. Um, and we also know that uh, Malobali and Romana are, uh, when they're married, they're wearing European clothes. Um, there's a lot of uh, contradictions, um, I think, in, in this section, and it ends um, with the separation of Malobali and Romana slash Ayodele um, because, she says, um, uh, of the whites. Yes, it was their customs, their religion that had come between her and Malobali. She hadn't known how to play the game of submissiveness, respect, and patience like her mother before her. She had wanted to speak to him as an equal, to give him advice, to run him. And in the end, she had lost him. So it's interesting that she um, kind of reprimands herself for um, thinking that she isn't equal to Malabali and trying to exert her influence in their relationship. Um, and she views this as a um, as the fault of the whites, their customs, and their religion, which is Christianity. So I guess another question is, uh, what did you make of that? I think that. Um, Conde may be trying to tell us 
as she does throughout the novel, that um, these relationships between the colonizers and the colonized um, are not always as simple as they're portrayed. Um, <clears throat> maybe there are some aspects of Christianity um, and of, of white culture that may in fact be valuable. I don't know, I don't know what she's trying to say. Um, so I'd be interested to see um, what you all think of that. Um, anyway, I think I've gone way over time, but um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Um, thanks.